I'm going to make a cernik for you right now. Cernik is cheesecake in Polish, and there are many, many, many types. This is one that I learned from my sister-in-law, and it's absolutely one of my favorites. If you like cheesecake, I think you'll really like this. If you like a light cheesecake, then this isn't for you because this is a very heavier kind of cheesecake, but it's absolutely delicious. So we're going to start off with one stick of softened butter, and I'm gonna to add to that one cup of sugar. Get that starting to blend on the mixer. And to that, I'm going to add two egg yolks. Now, I also have, that's going to go in here, three cups of all-purpose flour, three quarters of a cup of whole milk, two teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of almond extract, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. But first, I want to get this well blended. It looks good. I take it off the mixer only because I think it's easier for me to add all the other ingredients. So there goes my almond. Almond is a really important um, taste in this particular recipe, and a teaspoon of vanilla. I think also at this time I'm going to add the two teaspoons of baking powder and blend that up well. Wow, that almond is so strong, but it's such a delicious flavor. Okay. Scrape down my bowl a little bit. I just want to make sure that there's no bits that aren't getting blended in. Now, we'll add all the flour. I'll slowly add in the milk. And this mixture is going to form the base of our cheesecake. Do you hear that? My mixer speeded up all by itself. It's a good 20-something years old and she served me well. And she's still going strong. Now, 13 by 9 inch pan. I think everybody in the world has one of these if you do any baking whatsoever. You can use a glass one, you can use a metal one, but something about this size. It doesn't have to be exact. Now. And something else that makes this cheesecake kind of special is we're going to remove part of the base mixture and we're going to hold it off to the side because when we're done with the filling, we're then going to make a little design on top of our cheesecake. For this particular cheesecake, it's very traditional. It's a lattice. Don't get upset. It's real easy to make. I'll show you. So now, get another bowl and take out how much? Well, about a quarter to a third. It's kind of hard to tell how much you're going to need for your lattice top. Although you don't have to have a lattice top if you don't want it. If you are getting frightened by the fact of making a lattice top, don't make it but it really does look nice. I think I can afford to take out a little bit more. It's really kind of an eyeball kind of thing. Okay. And now we want 
to spread this out. I've seen some people make this. Um, I, I watched a video on YouTube actually, someone making this or a version of this, and they actually rolled it out on the counter and then sort of fit it into the pan. But it's really just as easy to sit there and press it in. And you'll notice I didn't grease the pan. You don't need to. It's pretty, pretty nice and rich dough. Although my hands are getting very, very sticky. I should have kept some flour off to the side. I've got myself some flour so I can flour up my hands a little bit. And just keep pressing it in. You want it to go slightly up the sides too, but you gotta get it onto to the bottom first. Oh, much better, much easier now. Okay, I've got the bottom covered. Now, slightly go up the sides. Now, I'm not Polish from Poland. I'm Polish by heritage. So my pronunciation of things sometimes is not that good. And my husband reminds me that I'm not pronouncing the name of this correctly. I said Cernik. The correct pronunciation would be Cernik. So I guess we... Dot our I's and cross our T's there. I apologize to anyone who was offended by that. Okay, look at that. Just got to get a little bit more down here because it's fatter on one end and not as fat on the, on the bottom on the other. And as soon as this is done, we're going to then make our filling. I just want to get the sides up a little bit higher because there is a lot of filling that's going to go in here. There. Now, I'm going to go clean up and get my filling ingredients and I'll be right back. Now I'm gonna make the filling for the sernik. And um, I've got a lot of ingredients here and this isn't even all of them. First of all, I have a lemon. We're gonna use lemon zest. I have four tablespoons of cornstarch, a half a cup of regular sugar, one pound of regular cottage cheese, eight ounces of sour cream, eight ounces of cream cheese, and the star of the show, one pound of farmer's cheese. In some places, it, this is known as cork, but it's farmer's cheese. And you can find this in most major supermarkets now. I've seen it in many different places. There is also another kind of farmer's cheese that looks like it's, it's flat and it looks like a teardrop, but it's about this big. It looks, you don't want that one. That one is way too dry. You want this regular farmer's cheese. If all else fails and you cannot find this, um, I've been told you can substitute more cottage cheese, but this is really so good. And this is the traditional one. So in the mixer, the cottage, the cork or the farmer's cheese, the cottage cheese. Sour cream. Cream cheese. It's all going in. The sugar, the cornstarch, and last but not least, grated lemon zest. 
you can do the whole lemon if you want, or if you don't like it too lemony, you can just do a half. You could leave it out if you want to, and you could just put in perhaps vanilla, but we're gonna add vanilla later on to this anyway. So, there we go. I don't wanna get any of the white pith, so I'm gonna be careful. And then you can save the juice for something else later. Now we need to blend this up in our mixer. happens to me. I try to start really slow and darn it gets me. And now I just want to get this till it's nice and smooth. And then when I'm done mixing it and it's nice and smooth, I'm going to remove it and put it into a larger bowl because I need this mixer bowl for the second half of this filling which contains the eggs. going to be smooth 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 it's going to have some bumps in it that farmer's cheese and the cottage cheese don't exactly get smooth 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 if you've never tried farmer's cheese I love it I love it just eating it just like that I use it also for the filling in my potato and cheese pierogi because that too is traditional so I'm going to put this in this bowl mmm Yummer. And I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to go get all the rest of the ingredients for our filling. So I'll be right back. This is the next step in our filling. And you might say to yourself, this is an awful lot of work for a cheesecake. Yeah, but it's really, really worth it. I'm telling you, you would love this. So I have four eggs. I put the yolks in my mixer bowl and have the whites in this bowl. And on the mixer, I'm going to beat up the yolks with a half a cup of sugar. And a teaspoon of vanilla. A little bit more, I like vanilla. And we're going to beat that up until they get light and thick. In the meantime, while those are beating up, I'm going to beat up the whites and I'm going to use an old-fashioned egg beater. I don't know if any of you have any of these. You can do this with a wire whisk too. But this is the way my mom used to do her eggs. And I don't want these stiff cakes. I just want them more than foamy. That's about there. And these are about right. Get back our wonderful cheese mixture. Scrape this down. I spend more time scraping down this beater. Like I said, it's been with me for a long time. And I want to add this to the cheese. It in. You don't have to be careful about this. It's not like you have a lot of air in those eggs or anything like that. Just want to get it blended in. Okay, I'm not even blended all the way in. Now I'm going to add the whites. I don't even need the spatula. Isn't that cute? 
a gift from my niece. Keep calm and bake on. I just want to get all of the whites blended in. You don't want to have pockets of white. And this is the end of the filling. And we're going to put it in our crust. Then we're going to do the lattice top. And after that, we'll get it in the oven. But there's even one more little step after that, too. Yes, lots of steps to this cheesecake. But as I said before, this is so worth it. Okay. Get out our crust. I spent a little bit more time pushing up the sides because there's a lot of filling here. And I want to make sure it doesn't overflow the top. And if it does, then don't put all the filling in. But here we go. I think I have just a little bit too much. So I'm not going to fill it any more than that. It's only a little bit in there anyway. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to go clean up the decks a little bit. I want to get the other um, dough that we put aside so we can make our lattice. Now we'll make the, the lattice for the top of the ceramic. And I'll put a little bit of flour. Now, when my sister-in-law made this originally, she would break off pieces of the dough. And then she would roll it into long ropes and put it on the cheesecake in the lattice form. But I'm going to try it this way. Fingers crossed. I'm just going to roll it out and try cutting lattice pieces. It's very, very sticky. The thing is that this stuff breaks very easily when you try to move it. So there's going to be a lot of patching when you do in the lattice. But, you know, after it's baked and cut, no one's going to see that. Okay, let's see what we have here. Okay, square off the edge. And yes, we will re-roll those. Very fragile, it breaks very easily, but you can patch it. Actually, her way was pretty easy, but it did take time to sit there and really roll out all of those long ropes. I was doing this with a friend of mine once, and she was rolling and rolling and rolling, and she said, Isn't there an easier way? look at it as relaxing, you know? Baking to me is relaxing. To some people it's not. Okay, now start the lattice the other way. And there's my oven heating up to 375 degrees. And once it goes into the oven, it's going to be for about an hour, all told. We're going to bake it for 10 minutes. Then we're going to take it out of the oven. And we are going to add cherries to the top of it as garnish. Now, I don't know why you leave it in for 10 minutes and take it out and then add the cherries. Why don't you just add the cherries in the beginning? 
but this is the way my sister-in-law told me to make it and so therefore that's the way I'm going to make it. To the pieces again in order to finish this. Just trying to gauge how long I should make it. Again, square off the edge. This knife gets really, really sticky. One more small piece. Okay. Now, I'm going to put it in the oven for 10 minutes, then I'm going to remove it, and I'm going to put the cherries on top, and then it's going to go back in for 40 to 50 minutes until the top starts to get a little golden brown. Here we go, into the oven. 10 minutes in the oven, you can see how it's already starting to puff up. Now I'm going to take my cherries and decorate the top. These are maraschino cherries. I drained them, I rinsed them, and they're still a little wet, but I did dry them on paper towels a little bit. And what I do is I put one cherry, oh, one cherry half, at like every intersection. And this just adds it adds flavor, you know, it's cool. I like the cherry part myself. As soon as I finish doing this, it's going back into the oven for 40 to 50 minutes until it is golden brown on top. I think I'll add one in that corner. Since I have extras, ah, oh, what the heck, I'll just throw one over there. All right, back in the oven for 40 to 50 minutes, and then it will come out, and we're going to have to let it cool really well. Mm -hmm.